Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming out early today. Just wanted to... Uh... We all good? All right, cool. All right, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Um, as you all know, the vote that was supposed to happen today was moved to tomorrow, but in lieu of keeping uh, a schedule, I decided to stay with today's 8 a.m. Uh, commitment to all of you and to the American people. Um, here's where we are. We are due to go for round three of expulsion of Congressman George Santos from NY3. Um, I, I think we can all look back and say, uh, this is not how at least I thought this year would go. I don't think this is how most of people in the media would think uh, this year would go. And uh, it's just uh, an unfortunate circumstance that I have to sit here and watch the American people waste, uh, Congress waste the American people's time over and over again on something that is the power of the people, not the power of Congress, which is to remove and elect, to elect and remove members of Congress. Obviously, uh, some want to cling to some circumstances and to allegations, but there's been a long-standing precedent in the House that every single member that's ever been expelled, and they are trying to join me to the group of three Confederates and two people convicted in a court of law. So if I am to get expelled tomorrow, I will be number six in the history, the first Republican and the only one without a conviction or without being part of a uh, or without having committed treason. So that's that's kind of where we stand today on, on that sense. But let me go down a few things here that to give you a sense of Congress today and what it represents for the American people. It represents chaos, chaos because we have a house that doesn't work for the people. We have a house where we have members with severe allegations against them having the gall and, the, and the, the courage to call the speaker a joke. I read that today in Political. It was on the cover of Political where, you know, we're, we're reading about members of Congress trying to smear one of the most honorable members of our conference in the Republican Party. So that's just where we've stooped down to. People with rap sheets who think and feel emboldened enough to go call out other people for their policy. Secondly, it's amazing to me that this House continues to want to push me out. Meanwhile, we have Secretary Mayorkas, who's committed absolute dereliction of his duty, has put all Americans in danger. If you saw last night, the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree lighting, which is something that for years has been one of the most beautiful celebrations in New York City, most peaceful, crowded, yes, but yesterday we had a band of vandals who thought it was appropriate to fight the NYPD. This is what took place just yesterday. And that's on Secretary Mayorkas, because a lot of these people, they're not here because they love this country. They're not here because they want the best for this country. Why are they here? It's starting from inside. And that's what you get when you have open borders and an administration that is oblivious to the real issue that's taking place. And then lastly, Let's talk about uh, let's talk about consistency. We have a member of Congress that earlier this year took a plea deal to obstructing a congressional hearing. That's not the plea deal he took, right? I'm kidding. He took a plea deal for pulling a fire alarm, a fire alarm which obstructed and delayed an official hearing and proceeding on the House floor. Now, had that been any other person, had it been one of the members of the media, had it been a Republican member of Congress, we all know that that person would have been filed, would have been charged with obstructing a congressional hearing, just like the somewhat 140 people sitting in prison right now because of January 6th. But Jamal Bowman gets a pass. That's why today at noon, I'm going to be introducing a privileged motion for expulsion of convicted and uh, guilty pleaded uh, Congressman Jamal Bowman, and I stand there, I think that that's consistency. Let's hold our own accountable, but let's make sure that we do it with the President of the House. Now, if the House wants to start different precedent and expel me, that is going to be the undoing of a lot of members of this body, because this will haunt them in the future, where mere allegations are sufficient to have members removed from office when duly elected by their people in their respective states and districts. So bearing that in mind, I'm going to make this a very brief and uh, uh, a comment on the, on the process here that's taken place with the Ethics Committee. By admission of the chairman himself, he said, 
that the process was not full throttled and not complete because it would require many more months in order for the committee to offer any kind of uh, punishment. So instead, they decided to stop short of completing the process, going ahead and putting out a slanderous report, unprecedented. Nobody here's ever seen ethics reports of any other members who's been under investigation. But yet again, changing precedent for me, it seems that it's all fair game. So there we go. They go ahead and release this, this report littered, littered in hyperbole, littered in opinion that would have no decent cop would bring this to a prosecutor or a DA and say, here's our report, go ahead and charge him, right? So this is what the ethics committee put out. God bless them and what they think they're doing and what their work is. You know, I believe they do good work when it's relevant, but this, this ain't it. So with that, I'm going to make this a very brief opportunity for a couple of questions because in an orderly fashion without screaming at me. We'll go by hands. Mr. Santos. Mr. Go ahead. I cooperated. I provided them every single document uh, for the most part that they went off of came from my counsel. Mr. Santos, Mr. Santos. Go ahead. You said that this is a distraction from the institution. I know you've been getting this question a lot, but if it's really truly a distraction from the institution, why not just resign? Because if I leave, they win. If I leave, the bullies take place. This is bullying. The, rep, the chair of the committee putting out a motion to expel, just introducing it and not calling its privilege, was designed to force me to resign. But he didn't even have the fortitude to go ahead and call the privilege. He had someone else do it, someone who's actually just recently done one on me, which is Congressman D'Esposito. So the reality of it is it's all theater. It's theater for the cameras. It's theater for the microphones. It's theater for the American people at the expense of the American people because no real work's getting done. Congressman Santos. Congressman Santos. Go ahead. You talked about a lot of the alleged transgressions of other members of Congress. Have you made any formal complaints to the OCE? I will be filing, I will be filing a slew of complaints uh, in the coming hours uh, of today and tomorrow to make sure that we keep the the playing field even because at this point I have been nothing but generous and kind with my time. I have not raised my voice or a single finger against a single other member of this body. But now I guess it's fair game to continue to do that. Congressman Santos. Congressman Santos. Congressman Santos. Go ahead. I told you I told you the other day I am not unpacking the, the report. It is counterproductive for me to do so at this time. There will be a time that I will unpack it entirely and go line by line. Uh, I will go line by line when the time is, is proper. Go ahead. He resigned. He resigned. That's the reality is he's resigned. He resigned. Right. Congressman Santos. Go ahead. Congressman Santos, you, you mentioned many members of Congress have rap sheets. Are you going to be naming them? Why why not why not put why not put them put their names out of the front? Well, why do I have to do your job for you? I mean, do you guys, you guys like digging up stuff on me? Why don't you go dig up on other members? There's so many, it's out in the open. Go ahead. Uh, um, have you talked a lot about during this process you're being bullied? Why do you be feeling that you're being bullied? Why do you think you're being bullied? Why do you think I mean, it's the third time. And each time for different reasons, and they just keep going. I don't know. Ask them. I don't care. Go ahead. I've said this many times. I'm fighting to defend myself and to dispel each and every accusation as soon as I have the opportunity. Go ahead. What do you say to your constituents who feel like they, you're not serving them while all this is going on? You see, that's not true. I've, I have two district offices in New York, and they, they're constantly busy with folks coming in for various issues, obviously pertaining from the simple as a, a need for an expedited passport to more complex immigration issues. There is one thing that sometimes deters people from walking in is when we have 
crowds of media outside the office. And I'm not blaming the media. I'm just saying that that does interfere with constituent services. People don't want to be on camera. They don't want they don't want that ex exposure of them. So, but the service is there. I nominated 29. 29 applicants to the uh, service academies and I've already had four gotten accepted and I did that earlier than most people in this building so I'm pretty proud of the fact that I have a staff that's a veteran staff in, in leadership in, in my DC office and in my district office and the operation runs pretty smooth I mean look we haven't had real complaints other than from organized uh, uh, anti George Santos groups Obviously, I didn't win my seat unanimously with every single vote in the district. I had people who opposed me, but uh, we do the best and we're open to everybody. And I look, the thing I like to do the most is serve the people and talk to them. Do you expect the expulsion vote to pass? In regards to the allegations that you bring up in the ethics report, though, these are items that you could easily say did not happen, that you have not participated in any of these things. So why are you waiting until after this vote comes down to actually address these major uh, issues? I didn't could say you? I didn't say I was waiting for the vote to come down. Well, it's coming down I have I understand. I'm doing this in a different schedule. It's not the schedule of the House or the expulsion. You well, already you got a question. Months Go ahead, report. sir. Do you expect the expulsion vote to pass? And if so, why do you think this time? I don't know. Look, from what I understand, the way I'm looking at this is uh, Congressman Lelota said he has 150 votes. So, I mean, if he has 150 votes, as he said already on the record, he has the votes. This is this is just plain and simple. Why do you think the votes have changed? Thank you. So there's 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 quite a few members that say they won't vote for this. Do you have a message? Oh, look, I, I've spoken to a lot of members. I don't ask people to come in my defense. I do not ask people to advocate for me. I've kept that. I did not whip this. I didn't whip it the first two times. And I, I stay steadfast on that because I think this is my battle and I don't want to drag people into the fray of this entire nonsensical operation right now. Uh, so I, I thank them for their courage because it takes courage these days to stand up for, for people, especially in my position. So I thank them. And, and these are people that I, I will never forget. Go ahead. You said this has been a year from hell for you. Obviously, three expulsion attempts, multiple indictments. Knowing where we are today, would you have done it all over again? I would have done a lot of things different. I would have associated with a lot of different people. I would have definitely stayed away from a lot of people. And uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Grace Ashford from the New York Times. You all know me because of her. So um, uh, interesting to see you here. Uh, but I will say this. Uh, today is my second year wedding anniversary and I'm going to enjoy it and try to forget the fact that it's been one year from hell, but I would do a few things differently. Hi, Michael. You said right there that you, you, know, you believe Lolota quick count that you'd expect it to be successful. Can you reflect on and describe your 11 month tenure in Congress? Yeah, sure. I mean, look, I'm proud of my voting record. I am proud of the work I got to do. And I came in here as a mad as hell activist who was just disenfranchised from the government, did not believe anything was getting done. I got to see how the sausage is made from the inside. I got to see how this place operates. I get to take that story back to the American people and say, look, this is what happens. This is why we don't see as much progress as we accept, uh, expect. Um, but I can say that I leave here, no regrets as far as my voting goes, no regrets as far as my advocacy for bills go. Every single issue from healthcare that I've taken up with insulin or with uh, gay rights abroad or with foreign aid, I, I, I really stand uh, uh, firm that I'm proud of the work I've put forward. I wish I could do more. If this is it, this is it. But if it's not, I'll continue to do as much more as I can. Chantel, Chante. So they're all judge, jury, and executioners because evidence isn't really a conviction or a verdict, uh, and allegations neither. So I mean, the way that they're looking at this is they're just they just needed a reason to do it. That's why the ethics committee released that statement two weeks ago to give them cover to vote no, uh, but little over two weeks ago, and then just give them the op option to change their votes this time around. First time I give you a question. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? No, no, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. These are six years old. I'm sorry, go on the website. These are six years old. Go ahead.
I have not spoken with him since I spoke to him uh, last, so there's no change. And what about his thoughts Rich, good to see you here. Well, you know what? Uh, if you if you put it into perspective, so every lame duck member of Congress is unproductive, Rich. Is that what you're suggesting? I'm suggesting you put that out there and no one asks you, say, why didn't you already say you're not going to run for re-election? But at the same time, what was done? Well, I'm not running for re-election because I chose not to put myself, my family, through this process. Because here's the reality when it comes down. You're a local Long Islander. You know how this works. I would have an uphill battle against the press. I would have an uphill battle against the the party and it, it's just you know what there's a point in time where you just say you know enough is enough i'm 35 years old rich it doesn't mean that it's goodbye forever that that's just all i can say so, yes sir how do you think of just generally how the speaker has handled this situation this third time around look I, I didn't want this to be on the speaker's hands. I didn't want the speaker to have to deal with this. He has bigger issues to deal with, like funding the government and passing appropriation bills and just, you know, getting the House back in order. But I, I, I think the man's a gentleman. He's, he's an ex exemplary member of this body, and he, he does a great job at everything he do, does. And look, we might not always agree with him, but I think he does his best effort to put out the best, you know, he can out there. I didn't see you there. You mentioned you don't, you're not operating on Congress's timeline. So what is your timeline for outlining all of this? And then what is next for you if you're looking at potentially being gone by Friday? Oh, look, I don't know. Future, the future uh, is endless. I mean, you just never know. You can do whatever you want next, uh, and I'm just going to do whatever I want. Whatever comes my way, I have the desire to stay very much involved in uh, public policy and advocacy for specific issues. And we also have an entire presidential campaign coming up in 2024. And, you know, I think I've made this very clear, but I won't rest until I see Donald Trump back in the White House. Last question. Hi. Hi, thank you so much. I spoke with uh, Jamal Bowman yesterday, and he just said it's long overdue that he either resign or be expelled. Okay, it's long overdue. He also get his fair day uh, at an expulsion vote because, after all, he pleaded to pulling a fire alarm, obstructing a, an official proceeding, lied about uh, his timeline. I put his timeline out. None of you actually picked it up. But if you look at the time from the moment he pulled off the fire alarm to the moment he showed up into the House, it was almost an hour later. So there was no rush to go to vote. There was a rush to stall the vote so that they can go into conference, so that they can read the bill and figure out if they were going to vote yay or nay on that. So, again, he lied to D.C. prosecutors on that. Anyway, look. Thank you very much, all of you, for coming out. I appreciate the time. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to do this. I'll be putting out uh, some invitation requests to some of you in the media. Keep it mixed up and do it well. And we'll do another pen and pad in my office probably later today. Thank you.